I think everyone is tired of watching the same top list like the strongest knockout artists in history or the top 10 best punches of all time. It will be clear to anyone who follows boxing that well-known heavyweights will be in the first 5 to 7 places. So it's time to make a small revolution and to approach the question of the most powerful knockout masters from the other side. Friends, today's video will be dedicated to the best finishers in every weight class during the entire history of the sport. Please don't forget the likes and forward comments and also the subscriptions so you never miss new videos. Here we go, let's do it. Light Flyweight Humberto Gonzalez. Gets nailed, nailed again. He's on rubber legs. Down he goes. And he's kept on him. There are 18 weight divisions in the professional boxing, so we're going to start with the lightest ones. Unfortunately, we did not pay attention to the mini flyweight division because it is very difficult to find a thermonuclear knockout artist in this category. But already in the light flyweight division, we can feast our eyes on a fighter such as Humberto Gonzalez. You would think, what kind of power can lurk in a guy who weighs 108 pounds? But do not jump to conclusions because La Chiquita can surprise you. During his 11-year career, the little Mexican fought 46 times, won 43, and 70% of his fights were finished by knockout, mostly with a single punch. For the light flyweight, that's an alarmingly huge number. The most interesting thing about Humberto's history is the way he became a champion. In the early 90s, the weight class was occupied by Michael Carvalho, who was named Little Hands of Stone. The brutal American with the life of a monster was a breath of fresh air for the category while performing early finishes all and sundry, including one to Gonzalez, who got knocked out in their first fight. But Michael's luck couldn't last forever and a year later he lost to the Mexican in a close fight and then lost the trilogy. Overall, Carbio was also a contender for the top light flyweight title, but Humberto's two losses and statistics gave Gonzalez the right to be considered the best. Flyweight, Victor Chinian. That was a belt line punch that uh, Mendoza won. Crushing left hand and the combination of follow-up shot. Let's see if Gabby gets up. From Mexican with dynamite, we go to one of the best professional boxers from Armenia, Vaktang Dachinian or Vic in simplest terms. For a man who fights at 112 pounds, Vaktang is at first sight too formidable nickname, the Raging Bull, but his nickname more than accurately describes the style of the unrestrained finisher. In his fights, Dachinian would pounce on his opponent with the ferocity and rage of a wild beast, and this tactic invariably earned him victories by knockout. If you're standing right now, sit down, otherwise this fact will shock you for sure. In 28 fights since the beginning of his career, the Armenian has won only four times by judges' decision. Vic fought for the belt for the first time in 2004 when he crossed the gloves with the Colombian elite Irene Pacheco with the record of 30 to 0. The main prize for the winner was the IBF title, which Pacheco defended for the seventh time now. Dachinian had no fear or doubt of the champion and knocked him out in the 11th round, interrupting his dominance. Since that day, Dachinian had no possible opponents in his career, but he continued to reduce the population of the flyweight boxers with his fists. The scary punch of Vic was beating everyone for seven years, but then he lost for the first time and later he changed weight category and was not so successful. But his 85% finish rate in this weight division makes Vic number one, no doubt. Super Flyweight, Kausai Galaxy the most frequent guests in the divisions from the light flyweight to the bantamweight are Thais and Filipinos. 
Being naturally short but very powerful, the athletes from these countries have always shown themselves to be natural-born fighters with great knockout potential, but they didn't get their previous two places. So Kaosai Galaxy climbed up here to make things right. Like any self-respecting Thai, Galaxy entered the sport along with Muay Thai, but quickly realized that he enjoyed swinging his arms much more than his legs. Kaosai entered the professional ring for the first time in 1980 and practically never left it till 1991. During his life, the legend of Thailand won 47 fights, among them 41 wins by knockout. 87 freaking percent of finishes? Yeah, that's almost like Tyson, with whom this killer kid has been compared more than once. The most dangerous punch in Ty Tyson's arsenal was the left hook, and his nickname? The left hand that drills the intestines. Only confirmed that the champion's left-handed attack were better not to be missed. Galaxy entered the ring three to four times in a year, usually for no more than six rounds, and after each such event, there was one more body added to the local morgue. For such an abnormally great power, even by Thai standards, Kao Sai takes the first place of this category, as well as the 19th position in the ranking of the most fearsome knockouts from the Ring magazine. Bantamweight, Naoya Inui. If you are tired of traveling through the chronicles of the past, then I hasten to please you. With the transition to the bantamweight, it is time for us to talk about a boxer from the modern top 10 pound for pound, a Japanese killer with the face of a teenager, Naoya Inui. The nickname of this unicum is Kaibutsu, which is translated as monster. But on the outside, the Japanese does not give even the slightest intimidating impression of himself at all. Thin and skinny, he seems like a harmless kid who likes to flip through manga, but as soon as he puts on gloves, everything changes. Naoya instantly transforms into one of the most dangerous men on the planet, and he knows no such words as fear or insecurity. He trails his opponent's jaw with a stone face to seize the moment and shut him down flat. Inui has no strong or weak punches, just get used to the idea that touching his opponent's face with his glove inevitably brings the fight to a halt. In addition to the fact that not a single opponent has that got hurt, but the tough Dominican Carlos Payano and Puerto Rico's new hope Emmanuel Rodriguez. If Inui doesn't slow down with this kind of record, he might knock Canelo off the boxing podium in the near future. Super Bantamweight, Manny Pacquiao. Manny Pacquiao pursuing Barotilio. He knows that Barotilio is hurt. And he goes! Down! Down! Ah, Barotilio! For the first time in this fight! Surprisingly, there have been many star knockout masters, such as Nassim Hamed, but the most intimidating one was definitely Manny Pacquiao, in the modest under 122 pound category. The little Filipino bulldozer with his 62% finish rate could be considered a puncher at any weight, but here in the super bantamweight, where his opponents were the same size as him, Manny was making a monthly meat grinder in the ring. Pacquiao got into the division in 1999, immediately won WBC international title and end of the fight. The Filipino's left hand was like a lightning bolt, striking once and killing immediately. No one at that time even understood how it was possible to work against this guy, who did not feel the return blows and put his opponents to sleep immediately. Only after many years of hard work and sleepless nights, the Mexican trainers in their headquarters would unravel the mystery of Pacquiao's style, but in the early 2000s, Manny was a disaster, having a bulletproof head and a 100% early wins rate, which is enough to be the number one in this weight. Featherweight, Antonio Esparagosa. But Esparagosa peppering Cruz now, Cruz having problems. And there he goes down for the first time in a fight. That was a left. Excellent left. The vast territories of the featherweight division are stretched out before you, and here the legendary Nassim Hamed is eclipsed by everyone with his charisma and technique. The prince is really associated with this category, and with his merits he could be in the first place, but before he came here there was already an alpha from the Venezuelan city of Cumana, Antonio Asparagosa. Antonio is an old-school boxer to the bone, and he doesn't like to speak pretty. Why should he? 
His fist can tell you better. As Paragosa shows an outstanding knockout ability already in the amateur ring. And when he changed his gloves to professional, he became some kind of a whole new kind of man. If the Venezuelan didn't finish the fight in the first six minutes, his opponent could already be given a monument because surviving the combinations of the peak Asparagosa was something on the verge of fantasy. The champion scored 27 knockouts of 30 wins in his career, and that's 90% finishes rate, which is the best result in the history of the category so far. All of Asparagosa's best years fell within a 10-year span, and that was enough to get him into the top 5 of the pound-for-pound -pound rankings but many of the fans of the past didn't understand the comedy and asked with a surprised face, who is this Asparagosa? Problems with recognition were because of weak media exposure and Antonio's own unwillingness to appear in public, which however, in no way prevented him from building a tremendous legacy and leading not only the top featherweight knockout masters, but also the list of the best Venezuelan boxers of all time. Super Featherweight, Diego Corrales. Garcia, four to two. Oh, there it goes. Garcia for straight back, and it's all over. It's all over. We've got a new champion, and his name is Diego Corrales. It's always hard to talk about those who passed away young, but we can't just pass by the story of Diego Corrales, a boxer who could be called the man opposite. Why is that? Chico was nearly 5.9 feet tall, and his reach was even greater. For a 130 pounder, such dimensions are not just above average, they are huge. Yet Diego himself did not take advantage of fortune and fought with outstanding zeal at close range, unleashing packs of power uppercuts. For this kind of fighting style, fans all over the world sat down in front of their television sets a week in advance so they wouldn't miss Corrales' fight. Besides unusual style decisions, Diego often boxed right-handed even though he was naturally left-handed and it was with his left hook that most often executed his opponents. Chico's father recalled how his son hit him in the face when he was 5 years old and even then, a grown-up man felt a little confusion in his head and what kind of TNT was stored in the gloves of the grown-up Corrales? I can't even imagine. Diego had 82% knockout rate out of his 40 wins in the professional ring and some of his performances such as the legendary rematch with Jose Castillo were recognized as the best fights of the year. Unfortunately, the talent went down very early and passed away at the age of 29, but thanks to the fights, we can honor the memory of this amazing knockout virtuoso. Lightweight, Javante Davis because in previous fights we've seen that he, yes. he seems kind of awkward, but in this fight he's not the one. There's a big left hand, and down goes Well, you didn't think anyone else could be in that spot, did you? For some reason, it was always the lightweight who had a little trouble with the explosive guys. But in 2019, the Baltimorean tank burst in here from the lower category with a machine gun, and the balance in the universe was restored. Javante bounced back from all the previous years and produced finishes not seen in 135 pounds for years and possibly never at all. The scariest thing about Davis is that you don't know when the fateful blow is going to arrive. You can calmly move around the ring, dodge in precise hooks, but then an explosion happens and we have a dead body in the ring. 93%, that's how many of Davis's fights have been finished prematurely and friends, those are the most astounding numbers in the entire compilation. That percentage of wins by knockout was never seen, not by Liston, not by Joe Lewis, not by freaking Mike Tyson, even though they're all the cream of the heavyweight division. Javante Davis has turned our idea of lightweight upside down and made us believe that even the little guy can have power beyond explanation. If it is announced that the fight between Devin Haney and Javante Davis will take place soon, I congratulate you. The world will probably hear the name of the new undisputed champion. Super lightweight, Julio Cesar Chavez. Midway through the fifth. Oh, brother, a combination. And down goes Julio Cesar Chavez, my God, how much controversy his name causes. A clown and a rogue to some, a legend to others, but
but we will not join any of the camps, but do a much smarter thing and trust the dry facts. First, Chavez Sr. is right in the middle of the Ring Magazine's top 100 punchers, which already tells us a lot about his talents. Secondly, the statistics cleverly points out that JC achieved knockouts in his fights in 80% of cases, and that is just too freaking much for a man who started to box in the super bantamweight class, but in total he scored more than 100 wins. Yes, Chavez has a few different categories under his belt, but it was in the super lightweight division, going hand in hand with Don King, that the Mexican found his greatness and aura of invincibility. All of the guys mentioned today were mostly headbreakers, while Caesar focused his entire career on dirty boxing and the body of his opponents. If his opponent didn't need a liver transplant after meeting Chavez, he could be considered a luckier man than those who win millions in a lottery. Yes, of course, there are questions about the Mexican because of his level of opposition, but think about it. Could a mediocre boxer without titanic power in his hands knock out more than 80 people in his career? I'm sure you can draw the right conclusion. Welterweight, Felix Trinidad. Fernando Vargas must score a knockout or he's lost this fight. Down goes Fernando again. Do you remember that uncomfortable feeling of discomfort you felt when you listened to scary stories? It seemed that danger was awaiting for you around every corner and that any careless step would have unfortunate consequences. I think many people understand me and now realize what all the welterweights of the 90s faced when Felix Trinidad came on the scene. The only difference between you and the boxers of those years is that their monster was more than real. The outstanding boxer, also one of the greatest punchers in history, was from Puerto Rico, and for 11 years he was making his country famous around the world. Tito had 35 of his 42 wins by knockout, and the main contribution to his victory was always the left hook, which Trinidad applied not by the standard technique, but in the beer mug position, increasing the chances to finish, while the iron jaw saved him from the knockout on the way back. The only thing that throws a shadow over the legacy of the welterweight king is that all the major wins of his career he got by decision, which did not prevent him from scoring knockouts in his next fights. We've talked about the top 100 punches many times today, but in the context of Felix, we have to do it again, because he is the opener of the top 30, which just goes to show how tough he was in his prime. Super welterweight, Thomas Hearns. Duran just playing on instinct, though, Gil. He's just hanging up big that's right it. now. That's, that's it, Tim. I Anytime you right fall now. forward, the fight's over, Tim. The higher up we go, the harder it gets to wade through the pile of bodies of knocked-out boxers. But there's still too much fun to stop. Another weight class is the super welterweight, and its personal executioner is Thomas Hearns. For sure, even not the most attentive fan has long understood that a boxer acquires popularity and greatness if he achieves success in several weight classes, and Hitman is no exception. The skinny assassin's first home was at welterweight, but after getting punched in the neck by Sugar Ray Leonard, Hearns moved up to super welterweight, where he went on to stamp knockouts, including knocking out Robert Duran himself. By the way, did you know how Thomas got that nickname? It's all about his right hook, which shot his opponents no worse than a high-powered sniper rifle. One squeeze of the trigger, and the target is motionless. Your order is complete, sir. The whole stomping flurry of punches Hearn style was designed for knockout and did not imply any adequate defense at all, for which the legend had paid several times in his fights. In total, Hitman had 61 wins in his long career with 48 knockouts, a 78% finish percentage, not a lot on the one hand, but on the other, the kind of sharks Thomas outworked in his youth. It's just creepy. Hearns takes his honorable first place for his amazing legacy and right hook from hell, as well as 18th in the ring's rankings. The middleweight is Gennady Golovkin. Good hook, Some of his best shots now, Roy. Yeah, that's a good hook. There you go. It was the, it was the Golovkin left oh. hand. If we went straight from Thomas Hearns to Marvin Hagler, the concentration of old school in the top would exceed all reasonable metrics. So let's tone it down and talk better about Gennady Golovkin. 
eight years. That's how long Triple G has been at the top of the middleweight food chain. And during this time, Gennady managed to clear the category 10 times from the challengers growing like mushrooms after the rain. Looking at this good-natured man who always gives a radiant and homely warm interviews, would you think that 88% of his fights ended by knockout? All of Golovkin's opponents had to fight with such scary as hell statistics, but almost every one of them invariably only improved the figure. At some point, all the middleweights were getting frankly desperate and started to think that they would be able to smell the championship belt only after Golovkin's retirement. But there came Canelo, who like everyone else, got his ass kicked. But he lived till the decision and thus earned a draw. But that's another story. Talking about signature punches in Gennady's case is not too correct, simply because every single punch is tough. Even Triple G's jab made their heads explode to the other end of the ring. But nevertheless, the right cross that makes the middleweight's jaw drop apart even in his 40s dominates much more than the other punches. The Super Middleweight, David Benavidez. J J Leon has got to be moving. He's got to use his legs. Oh, big That's right by Benavides. That's it. Well, little by little, we're getting to the heavy guys. And here we meet the super middleweight first, with its main puncher, David Benavides. Giving the red flag the top spot, especially now that he's coming off a decision win, is a big advance. But let's break this one down further. To begin with, Plant is not human and no one could likely take that many blows to the head without going to paradise. The second argument for Benavidez would be his age. He's only 26 years old and just entered the peak of his physical capabilities. He's undefeated now. 85% of his fights have been decided prematurely. Why does the Mexican in fact manage to make chops out of his opponents? The formula is simple. High tempo, a million punches per minute and a left hook which hits harder than a sledgehammer on an anvil. It does sound very simple, doesn't it? Except only Benavides can use such a skill set, and that's scary. Even Mike Tyson recognized the guy's power. I'd be afraid to fight him too, if I was in that division. No one even had the chance against him. I don't know what will happen when David gets stronger, I don't know, maybe the universe will collapse because of too much knockout power or something worse. But I'm sure of one thing, Benavidez is a future champion and even pound for pound king Canelo Alvarez won't be able to stop this machine. Light heavyweight, Artur Bedobiev. He's trying to make adjustments, but now he might really be hurt with Bedobiev all over him. Oh, and down he goes after a hard left uppercut. The killer with the face of a teenager was there. So was the Thai knockout master. A mini copy of Tyson from Baltimore is present. It seems like nothing can surprise you anymore, right? Well, there isn't. It's time to discuss the wolf from Dagestan, who outclassed them all. Artur Bedobiev has done something unthinkable and really so far surpasses everyone who has been and will be after him by one criterion, the percentage of finishes. Bedebiev has dismantled everyone who has entered the ring with him. 100% premature wins, 19 knockouts in 19 fights. How could you say that even more loudly? Bedebiev is an absolute unicum in terms of predispositions to knockouts. But good acquaintances said that he was not always like that. In his youth, Arthur trained a lot with a sledgehammer and a tire, and his colleagues believed that it was this exercise that developed his animal strength. But whatever was behind Better Beer's near divine power, it doesn't matter now, because he is officially the most feared light heavyweight champion of all time. If each of his 19 victories was over a no name, I'd still understand how, but Arthur is the best in the three major leagues, and he knocks out the elite guys. If this division had been any more popular, Bedobiev would be legendary even now. But he is partially in the shadow of his more famous colleagues. But that doesn't prevent him from being one of the best punchers of the 21st century. Cruiserweight, David Hay. You know, was a tremendous punch. Full credit for taking that. He needs to grab hold. He needs to grab hold of David Hay. 
the first heavyweight or cruiserweight in the vernacular. As long as the division has existed, it has been in the shadow of its big brother. But there were several boxers who tried to pull it out of the bottom. Evander Holyfield and Alexander Usyk managed to attract attention to the cruiserweight division for a while, but then they left it for the heavyweight division. Similarly, the most formidable knockout artist of all time, David Hay, did the same. Most fans remember Hay as the gangster who trolled Klitschko for two years and then lost by unanimous decision, but actually Hay's career is not limited to those moments alone. The British bazooka lost only once at native weight, while dropping people more often than they had time to get up. Throughout his career, Hay has 28 wins and 26 KOs. That tells us about 92% of his finishes. That being said, you couldn't really call David a one-sided puncher who stands and dreams of striking. Quite the contrary. He was a very technical boxer, with perfect sense of distance. But you can't go wrong if your fists are gifted from above and you're a fanatic about training for good physical shape. Unfortunately, Hay lost the main fights of his career, but still managed to hold world titles in different versions and his dense list of finishes make him statistically the best cruiserweight knockout master. Heavyweight Deontay Wilder He put Wilder on his back foot. And there's a huge hit! Down goes Heredius! The squad is back! And the first most respected and honourable place in the selection goes to none other than Tyson Fury. The British boxing legend can rightly be considered as the most powerful puncher in the history of his weight. Well, enough of the Gypsy King. You all knew it was going to be Deontay. In fact, there's a whole list of heavyweights who for various reasons could be ranked number one. But let's not rely on fan love and look again at the statistics. And they tell us that Wilder finishes his fights early with 97% probability. It's a cosmic result, especially if we look at the stats of the other heavy hitters like Foreman, Tyson or Lewis. Yeah, they're all around 90%, but Deontay's got them all. What is the secret of the bronze bomber? Maybe he was hitting the tires with a sledgehammer too, or taking tonnage of punches. Yeah, right. Wilder was just born with high explosive bombs instead of hands and sometimes even the tiniest, shortest punches from him is enough to make the lights go out in his opponent's head. Ironically, only the most unathletic heavyweight champion of all time was able to find an approach to this biological mutant. The rest were waiting for a single punch knockout. Deontay has now overtaken all other heavyweights in KO wins, and the only one who could surpass him in KO wins is a heavyweight with 100% KO wins. But before that was born, the Bronze Bomber proudly takes the top spot and finishes the compilation. Did you like the video? Then make sure you like it and subscribe to the channel. Who in your opinion did we forget to include in this top list? Which of these boxers do you think is the best puncher of all time? Be sure to share your opinion in the comments.